Um, population is a bit of a, a, a controversial topic, right? But I want to touch upon it just to raise a few issues. It's got religious implications. It's got uh, all kinds of uh, blame issues associated with them. As I said, rich countries said China and India are causing uh, climate change because of population increase and so on. Uh, I'm not going to try to argue that population increase is not a problem, but I want to highlight some subtle things that get missed when we blindly assign blame to population increase as a causative factor for climate change. It's more subtle than that, okay? I will, I will argue that it's the increase in consumption that is critical because, in fact, counterintuitively, Decreased fertility has always come with increased consumption, and we'll see why that is, okay? So if we look at this long-term uh, climate ch uh, population increase, at the end of the last ice age, we were down at uh, a few million, and with agricultural uh, uh, societies, agricultural lifestyle, as opposed to hunting and gathering, communities began to settle down and not move very much, which is... Uh, supposed to have caused increased in infertility as well. Popu uh, family units developed, maybe monogamy became more common and so on. So population began to increase by about uh, 5,000 years. We were at 25 million during Egypt's first dynasty. Um, about 2,500 years ago when Buddha uh, lived, we were already at a hundred million. By the time Napoleon led the French army in the 1700s, uh, we were at 1 billion. And then we have been in this super exponential increase in population, right? The Great Depression, we had 2 billion. By end of Vietnam War, we had 4 billion. And then we have added basically another world by the time we have come to now 7.2 billion. This is already a few years old. Nonetheless, the projections are all over the place. Some projections say we will go to 10 billion, but people point out that with the education of women, fertility rates have dropped. Even though population increases, birth rates have dropped, right? And along with that comes nuclearization of families, which means family units are becoming smaller and smaller. With that comes uh, living in individual houses with more energy consumption and uh, Women, when they get rich, they are not saying, I'm rich now, I'll have more kids. In fact, they're having fewer kids and giving want to give each kid more wealth, more resources so that they can do better, which automatically leads to increased consumption. Okay? So if you think about average carbon footprint, we will see in a minute, it doesn't necessarily imply that increased population has been the cause of climate change. It's mostly been the increased consumption. But population increase obviously puts a lot of pressure on habitats. So you become, uh, you, you start to get into the habitats of tigers, leopards, uh, elephants. There are human uh, wildlife conflicts all over the place, uh, more demand for water, uh, fuel, etc., etc. So population obviously uh, the cannot be so high and cannot continue to increase. But we still have to be careful to say, if we reduce population, we will reduce climate change. That may not be true unless we pay attention to how consumption uh, goes with population change. That's critical, okay? So for historical purposes, uh, uh, we can look at carbon footprints as well. So right now, this is... Uh, from 2020 Union uh, of Concerned Scientists, another organization that's doing phenomenal work, looking at different continents. The uh, carbon footprint is 28% uh, from China. Rest of the world here is 21. So United States and China are big uh, contributors. India is at 7%, but increasing. China is increasing as well. Uh, European Union, it depends uh, whether you take it as one unit or multiple units. Sometimes there's some trickery involved because they want to form a co uh, economic union, currency union, but they want to be counted differently when it, separately when it comes to carbon footprint. I think that's a bit of a trickery, but anyway, so it goes. Okay, so this gives you a sense. Since 1990, 
China has grown to be an uh, uh, economic superpower. Its energy usage has gone up. Uh, its carbon footprint has gone up, and it has surpassed United States, which used to be the biggest contributor for uh, the longest time. So if you look historically then, who has caused climate change and the accumulated carbon? Remember, carbon has long uh, residence time and accumulates. So if you go back to the Industrial Revolution, it started in the uh, European uh, region. So European Union has been a big contributor. United States has been the next big contributor. China, India, and the rest of them have not been. So can you use historical contribution to climate change as some sort of a um, justification for uh, assigning responsibility? It's already kind of agreed that Back then, we didn't know completely what the effect of all our industrial activities and energy consumptions are. The fact is, Arrhenius, Guy Calendar, and many people were already pointing out that we are doing harm to the environment and we are increasing CO2 and we are causing warming, so whatever. From 1990, if you count, which is what is done mostly under uh, Paris Agreement, for example, then you can see now emissions per capita becomes more important. Who is living a very carbon intensive lifestyle? Rich country like United States average footprint is about 16.5 tons per person per year. Australia, Canada, Netherlands, Japan, China is down here at 7.5. India is down here at 1.7. Okay, But even this is misleading because if you just think about India, for example, there are some people who are very rich and the middle class is growing and everybody is getting into a western uh, type of lifestyle which essentially means more driving, more meat and fish consumption, uh, bigger home, more energy consumption, bigger carbon footprint. So when you say Indian carbon footprint is 1.7 tons per person, that is averaging over very poor people who have a very, very low carbon footprint. Okay, So countries where uh, women have uh, just replacement 2.1 child per couple or less, many countries like Japan, uh, Germany, Spain, uh, already are below replacement level, with ma which means women are not having children or having just one child, which is also common for rich people in China and India, right? Does that mean their uh, consumption goes down? Not necessarily. Their carbon footprint, enough, in fact, goes towards the Western style. So population decrease is not necessarily coming with a reduced carbon footprint. So if you take the accumulated carbon being produced mostly by rich countries like the European Union and US and now reduce population coming with increased consumption then we have to be extremely careful to blindly say that reducing population will uh, will uh, mitigate climate change this may not be true we must keep our eye on consumption okay this is the point I wanted to make population growth has to come down and it is coming down and there are projections which say that we may drop very rapidly down to uh, just a few billion instead of growing to 10 billion by 2050 or 2100 because women educated women rich women begin to have fewer and fewer kids so we may end up having the other planet other problem there is a book called empty planet which argues these kind of things as well so Population right now is a problem. We don't want it to continue to grow rapidly, but we must monitor consumption, which is a bigger problem for climate change. I just wanted to make that point because you will often hear population as a big problem for climate change, but it is not that simple at all.